Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making brick cheese. Well, brick cheese was originally made or invented in Wisconsin in the USA. Now the story goes is this guy who knew a guy bought a whole bunch of real brick molds. You know, the ones I make clay bricks from? Don't anymore, but back in the day they used to. And because he didn't have it and use that mold for, um, for making the cheese, hence the brick shape. Also, because he didn't have anything to press the cheese with, he simply placed a brick that was originally made in the form on top of the cheese and that pressed the cheese. So hence the name Brick Cheese. Pretty cool, great origins. Now this cheese will be surface ripened with Brevi Bacteria linens. I've popped that into the pot and it's all happening and I'm washing it every day. But uh, it tends to be a very smooth and mellow sort of cheese. So let's get on and see how we made Brick Cheese. So I'm using milk from Inglenook Dairy. Thanks to those guys for supplying it for this video. The ingredients are 8 litres or 8 quarts of whole cow's milk, an eighth of a teaspoon or a dash of thermophilic culture, one thirty-second of a teaspoon, which is a smidgen, of Brevibacterium linens, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in a quarter of a cup of cool, non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, I'm using strength IMCU 200, which is about the same as single strength rennet, and that's diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water and an 18% saturated brine solution for salting the cheese. Now I've turned the heat on to warm the milk up, pop my thermometer on there and by the magic of television it is now at 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's time to add the starter cultures. I'm now adding the thermophilic starter culture to my milk after a quick stir. So I'm using uh, MOT92, which is a good all-rounder thermophilic starter culture. It's made by Sacco, but you can use any brand of uh, thermophilic starter culture for this cheese. Now I'm adding the Brevi Bacterium Linens, which is the red to orange mould that you see on the surface of cheeses. And it makes the cheese smell a bit pongy. Okay, so they're just both sprinkled on the surface of the cheese, oh, of the milk. And I'm taking all the utensils out. I'm going to allow the starter cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. Pop the lid on, make sure no fluff gets in there. So five minutes later, we're going to stir in the cultures. So I'm doing a stirring, a top to bottom stirring motion there because this is cream line milk or unhomogenized milk and it tends to uh, the cream tends to float to the top in between the stirrings and addings and all that sort of stuff. So I've thoroughly mixed those cultures through. Now we're going to cover and ripen for only 15 minutes at 32 Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit. It's a very short ripening period because this is a very mild cheese. Okay, so 15 minutes later, after a little bit of lactose has been converted to lactic acid, and prepared the way for our uh, addition of our rennet. And just checking the temperature, it's a little bit higher than it should be, so it's 33.5, it should be 32, but that's okay. It'll cool down again in the next stage. So I'm just adding the calcium chloride solution to the milk. What that does, it puts back soluble calcium, which helps uh, assist a curd set if you're using pasteurized milk. So I've thoroughly mixed that through and now I'm going to add the diluted rennet. Let's pour that in while I'm stirring. 
and we stir for no longer than one minute because this sets fairly fast. So good stir through, less than a minute, take your utensils out and pop the lid back on. Now we're going to cover and allow the milk to set for 40 minutes at 32 Celsius 90 Fahrenheit. So after the time had elapsed, this is what I came back to. I checked for a clean break and I didn't think it was firm enough. It was still fairly runny, uh, hadn't firmly set. So I popped the lid back on and I set the timer for another 15 minutes. So 15 minutes later, I checked again and that's a much better clean break. I was happy with that. And it was time to proceed on and cut the curds. So using my curd cutter, I cut it into one centimetre or three-eighths of, three of an inch uh, cubes. And I'm using my curd cutting knife to cut the vertical. So I cut it one way and then across the other way. Now if you don't have a uh, curd harp like I did, you would have to do a cut at 45 degree angle all the way around the pot to uh, to get those horizontals. There we go. So we're going to pop the lid back on and we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. This just uh, helps them when you first stir it. So five minutes later, just take the lid off. There's a little bit of whey on top, which is perfectly normal. I'm going to use my spoon to move and lift the curds very gently at first to make sure that they are all evenly cut. Now they look a little bit on the big side, some of these curds, so I'm just breaking, breaking up the large bits by cutting them with the edge of the spoon as necessary. And just checking the temperature, it has uh, dropped down to 30.9, so it's about a degree under what it should be. So I'm turning the heat on there. 31, that looks nice. So what I'm going to do now is uh, gently stir the curds for 40 minutes, while at the same time slowly heating it up to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So a slow heating process, and this helps more whey get expelled from the curds and the curds to shrink. So this is 40 minutes later. We're at 40 degrees Celsius or close enough to it. And you'll see that the uh, curds are fairly small there in the pot as I'm stirring them there. So they're probably down to about baked bean size now from that one centimetre cube. I'm going to take all the utensils out, I'm going to put the lid back on and we're going to let all of the curds sink to the bottom because we're going to be washing the curds to lower the acidity of the overall curds in a second. So turn off any heat that you've got on, just like that, and allow the curds to settle for five minutes. So five minutes later you'll see a big pool of whey on the top. I'm going to dip that off down to just above the level of the curd. So I'm just using a sanitised cup and a sieve and that helps me uh, uh, prevents any curd getting into the whey. The sieve certainly makes it a lot easier than uh, scooping up cups of curd. Um, and there we go. There's the level I was trying to get to. So just above the um, the curds. Now we're replacing that with an equal amount of water at 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I found that uh, my tap water, the hot water out of the tap, was exactly the right temperature. So I'm just taking it from the tap and filling it up to the line on the pot. So give that a good stir. So the target temperature after we've added the water, it's still 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to stir for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes of stirring, there's our target temperature. We've reached it. It hasn't moved 
from before we washed the curd. So we've now lowered the overall acidity of the curds, uh, which makes this cheese very mellow. So you can see that the curds have shrunk again after this second stirring. So we're just going to allow the curds to set, settle for five minutes so we can uh, drain off the whey and the curds. So over to the sink area, I've got a cheesecloth line colander there. And I'm going to drain the whey through that. Now you can reserve the whey if you want to and use it for all manner of things, but uh, I already had some in the fridge from the previous cheese and uh, the garden had just been rained on, so that's why I'm not using it. So just pouring the curds and whey through and we're keeping the curds and letting the whey go. Okay, so it doesn't take long to drain off. So we're going to fill a brick shaped mould or a rectangle mould with our curds. Now I'm using a spoon, it seemed to be a lot easier because the firm, the curds were fairly firm at this stage. And I found it was a lot easier to use a tight weave cheesecloth or butter muslin uh, in the colander because uh, I was going to spoon it out. If I had to use a loose weave uh, cheesecloth like I've lined the mould with, it would have been hard to scrape out any of the curds. There we go. So I'm just folding over the cheesecloth or just making sure there are no wrinkles in the cheesecloth first. Folding that over and just putting a plastic pressing plate. I just got this out of my Tupperware drawer and it seemed to fit on top okay. So we're going to drain that for another 15 minutes. There we go. So I'm just going to take that plastic plate on. That helped it keep warm too by the way. So I'm just turning the curd mass over in the cheesecloth um, into the mould. I'm not redressing or anything like that. And then putting the plastic mould back on top or one of two I've got there just to keep a little bit of warmth in. There we go. I'm going to drain that for another 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, we're starting to get serious. We're going to take the cheese out of the mould. And we're going to take it out of the cheesecloth and turn it over. So we're redressing it and we're going to press the cheese using a very rudimentary cheese press of uh, 2 kilograms or 4.4 pounds. Just uh, making sure there's no wrinkles in the cheesecloth. I'm going to fold one side over. There we are, put my plastic plate on and put my milk bottle. So I've got a 2 litre milk bottle filled with 2 litres of water and that equals two kilograms of weight, which is the magic of the metric system. Now, I decided that uh, it would probably slip over, so I put a small feta basket in the top to help distribute the weight. Now, I figured soon enough that that didn't work either, so I went and got another large rectangle mould, and that was perfect. I don't know why I didn't use that in the first place. So just pop that in there, and uh, it's distributing the weight evenly over the surface of the cheese. Okay. So after two hours, I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to take it out of the mould, take the cheese out of the cheesecloth, flip it over, and uh, redress it. And then we're going to press at that two kilograms, or 4.4 pounds, for another two hours. Just make sure there's no wrinkles in the cheesecloth. Put the basket on top. And there's my weight. Now you can use a brick. That's fine. If you can find something that's the right shape for your mould, then feel free to use it. Okay, so, so far, total of four hours pressing. I'm going to do it one final time. So take the cheese out of the cheesecloth, flip it over, and pop it back into the mould, and uh, put the weight on top. So that'll be a total of six hours pressing using two kilograms or 4.4 pounds. So after six hours, we're going to remove the cheese and we're going to place it into an 18% brine for four hours. And then we're going to turn it over at the two hour mark. So pop it in, it should float. 
if your brine is saturated enough. And I'm just putting my little pressing plate on top there that that keeps it fully submerged and that works well. So this is normally a ripening box that I've just uh, used as a, a brining container. So after the uh, four hours has elapsed, we're going to remove the cheese from the brine and we're going to air dry that for 24 hours. There we go. So my little brick cheese is looking very nice at this stage. So you can see there, yes, it does have patterns from the uh, the container, which you probably wouldn't get from, uh, sorry, from the mould that you probably wouldn't get normally, but uh, it's the only mould I had available. So we're going to place that in a ripening box, uh, in a ripening box at 16 degrees Celsius or 60 Fahrenheit at 90% relative humidity for the first two weeks. Now during that two weeks, we're going to turn it daily and wash it every other day with a simple brine solution, just like I'm doing here. Now to keep the humidity up, what I've got is a, uh, a cloth that has been uh, soaked in water and that's underneath the mat and that keeps the humidity up to the right amount that I need. Now, this is a very soft cheese to handle. Just make sure that you take care when you're washing it with the brine solution. So I'm popping that back into the ripening box and popping the lid on. Now a reddish smear should appear over the uh, cheese at about 10 to 12 days. After two weeks, we can clear the surface off to remove some of the smear and then dry it thoroughly with paper towel so it's not damp anymore. Now then you can wrap it in, say, uh, foil or uh, cling wrap and store it at uh, 4 degrees Celsius and that'll be fine. You can eat it now. Well, there you go. Very simple, as you saw. The only bit was the pressing and trying to find moulds that were brick shaped. And luckily I had these large rectangular moulds. And as you saw halfway through the video, and I'll probably explain this by now, I simply figured out that all I had to get was another mould, put it on top and press it with, I used a milk carton sitting on top. So this is a two litre milk bottle that we have here in Australia and filled with two litres of water, it becomes two kilograms, which is almost the same as, same weight as a brick. So pretty cool. I hope you wa liked watching this video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it for you. Now, if you did like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share on any social media that you like. You can buy the kits and all that sort of stuff and these moulds, of course, over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.